Hi, everyone. It's Louise with Louise McCann, and I'm back for another CD pour. Only this time, I'm going to just go with a black base. Now, this black is actually not a full black. This is my scrap black. So whenever you see me pulling off scrap paint, like over here, it becomes like a dark gray. And that's what this is. Look at that. Ooh, really tacky. So I'm going to go with that. I'm not going to use a white base this time. I'm just going to go straight black. And I've got my, uh, I got my colors over here. From my last palette that I did, I swapped out the pink and I went, now I'm going with the, the Bordeaux red in this lineup. And we'll see what this does. All right, just playing around. Here we go. I can see this has got some pearl in it or some kind of gold as well because there's some shimmery colors in here. I think I just saw something in there. Let me let me pull out my fishing pole. Where's my fishing pole? And yep. Always some good stuff to fish. I try to be a little more careful. I'm not going to pour all the colors directly on top of each other. And I'll try not to put a big blob of blue down like I did the last time. But I want the gold to show up. So, let's do the Nicolazzo. And my heater's coming on, so I'm gonna have to voice over this. So yeah, I'm taking over the voiceover and I'm gonna pick up the pace a little bit and I don't know why the heater sounds so bad on the recording. Um, it's not that loud, but it is directly overhead, and somehow the microphone just picks up the sound really easily. So back to the painting. This is Bordeaux Red by Arteza, and this is Golden's Dioxazine Purple. And I don't know if you noticed it, but I'm not drizzling the colors over each other. I'm kind of layering them down in lines with some slight overlap with the color before. And I've got two stripes going down both sides of the gold. Now this here is Golden's Anthraquinone Blue, my Anthrax Blue. Now, the reason why I'm layering it like this is I want to see if the colors can be a little more independent from each other since they're standalone colors and lines by themselves with slight overlap. Just want to see what the effects are by laying them down that way. And now here I am getting ready to put my cell activator on. I've got my white down already, drizzling down some black, and then I'm gonna swipe it through and we'll see what we get. Now on this one, I swiped really wide so that I have a little more of a head start on the spread of the paints from side to side. So at this point, I'm just gonna be quiet and I'll chime in when I need to. I'll let some music play now.
quick gesture that you see with my hand is the fact that I deliberately decided not to do any scooping and dragging with this because I really like the way it looks and I didn't want to maneuver any of it around. I wanted to see if I can spread it out across the entire disc. Getting closer to the edge. I don't know if I want it to go off. It's in these moments here that you're deciding, you know, do I like it the way it is? Do I want to have that black negative space or what? It's on the fly deciding. I feel like it needs something here. Like it needs, I need to pull something out. On the other hand, the black on both sides provided really nice balance. So these were some of the thoughts going through my head. And also if I spun anymore, I would lose your left side. Or put a little black up here because this is bugging me. This right here is bugging me. Hmm, I like that. Do it. Oh, shoot, I put some in there. Oh well, mix it up. <laughs> It's hard for you to see what I was talking about there, but it was a really sharp divergence to the edge from the black to the white, and I just kind of smoothed it over just a little bit. Oh, well, that's much more dynamic. Yeah, just the black. This is actually my recycled black. But I'm debating whether to keep going and pushing it off or keep some black. And I'm also debating whether I should maybe stretch just a little connector, just a little palette knife going through and just pull. Maybe something over here or just spin it one more time, see what I get. But I put the red in there too, I love the red. The yeah, red's, the red is dynamic. Yeah. I don't know what the A black is giving you. Oh, I mean, if you lose a little more, it's not a tragedy. It's getting kind of stretched out, I think, too. Mm -hmm. See, the whole thing with paint pouring is that it's hypnotic. That's why. <laughs> Not stretching a whole lot. Oh. <laughs> a little more? 
Whichever. It's not. It's not getting worse. No. And I have paint to spread. It's getting there. It's almost to the edge. Ooh. 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 <laughs> I really like this. Yeah. But I don't know if I should just go one little more. No. Why? Then up here. It's fine. I don't think you need to do anything. Yeah, I like this guy. Yeah, oh. it's got great colors. Yeah. Great sparkle. Mm hmm. I laid it down differently. I laid it down a little different than I've been laying things down. Mm, the white and black in, is interesting. I wouldn't want to lose all the black. Well, that's what I was saying before. I, I liked the black and the white. Okay, I'm going to leave it at that. I uh, I like that. I think it'll probably grow on you, too. Well, I think I'm keeping this one. I don't think I'm giving this one to him. <laughs> I get to pick. So what I'm referring to there is my neighbor up the street who's been helping me with my bases, and I've been giving him faces of clocks, so I think I'm keeping this one. <laughs> so here I'm just cleaning up the base, the bottom, making sure I'm pulling off any drips, and then I'll be back in a second. So I hope you enjoy the video, including the impromptu discussion with my husband. And just notice how the individual colors played out here. So I did give this to my friend up the street and he turned it into this comet clock. So if you wanna see more, go to the link attached in the top right of the screen. Thanks a lot, everybody. Take care.